Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360. And the problem with STL files and normal solids, if we want to combine this in some way, and this is from a Facebook question, the question was if we can take this STL field, as you can see it's slightly sunken down into the solid, I can show the analytics from the side here, so the design intent is to make a base with something like an LED, I just a simple mock up here. And the problem is, of course, how do we cut out this, this STL field file from the solid? And we want to avoid to convert this into a solid. You can see there's a lot of triangles where we take all day for Fusion to convert this. And yes, we can do this in other software, but the new mesh tools and possibilities with uh, some other features has made this easier in Fusion and totally doable without waiting all day for Fusion to think. So we're going to do a new design. Uh, we're going to go with the mesh space and start by inserting our mesh and checking our mesh. I have a mesh here. I'm going to open it. Let Fusion think for a couple of seconds. And for convenience to know where things are, I'm going to open, turn off our region. I'm going to center it and then move to ground and hit OK. This should orient the STL so that this flat underside is uh, to this uh, plane here, the bottom plane. And of course, this is a uh, inside a shelled out version of this already STL. I don't want to tell Fusion to shell this thing uh, to take all day. Uh, so that is our STL file. Number one, open up the bodies and have a look at the STL file. You should not have a yellow warning next to it here. If you have that, click the yellow warning and do the auto repair or what it there are some repair function within Fusion because the STL is then broken. It's not a closed uh, watertight STL file. And that it can cause problems. It doesn't have to cause problems, but you should always work with uh, good STL files. And that's not the software's fault, that's the creator of the STL file if it's a broken STL. So we have our STL file. Let's move over to the SolidWorks page. We're going to create a sketch on the bottom plane. Let's move it around. We're going to do a simple circle. I think 100 millimeters was big enough to cover the complete uh, STL file. Yes. So we're going to hit E for extrude, we're going to do it two way, two sides. We're going to do it up something like, let's do it four millimeters, and then we're going to do downwards uh, 16. And like that, turn on our triangles, a bit easier to see. We're going to open up and hide this. You see, we have a mesh file and we have a solid body. And we have a little nice base here. We can add a chamfer for fun. Let's chamfer it out here. Chamfers are fun for, oh. That's our basic shape. Of course, now the problem. We want to cut out this STL file from this here. We want to. We can't use combines and stuff like that. And this, as I just said, will always be problematic because if you look at the STL file, file, the part down here that will be down in our solid base have like small parts sticking out and it's in and out. So you need to physically use a knife or file to fix the 3D printer version of this so that it fits nicely into the base. We're going to do some things to try and make it fit as good as possible. So let's do this. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do mesh. Let's see if we can find it. Create and create mesh section sketch. We just click that. We select the body, the SDL file, and the section plane is going to be the top of our little uh, base here we're creating. What it does now is going to create a, like a slice of the STL file. Hit OK. Wait for Fusion to think. Hide this. Hide this. So it created a bit of an interesting sketch. A sketch with a subdivision of a mesh section. You can see it lights up because we can't use the mesh section right now. You see it flashes up the body behind we move around. What we do now, want to do now, we're going to go back and edit this sketch. We can do it right down here in the timeline. Right click. Edit sketch, and now we want to turn these lines into some useful geometry. We do that to go into the create menu and fit curves to mesh section. Uh, check for fit curve type. You can do different things here if you know it's an arc and so forth, you're imported. But in this case, we're going to do closed spline because we want the full length around here. Select the outer edge. I don't care the in inside because it was a shell version of Groot, and we just want outside. So, we're going to click that and hit OK. And now to just check that things work, we can hide the mesh, mesh section sketch and only see our profile. And yes, we have a close, pro close profile. Hit Finish Sketch. Uh, and for some reason, uh, Fusion always pops up the mesh section again, so 
just to click something to hide it. I want to see it. I also see this part. Turn on our body. Hit E for extrude. It lights up our profile. And I'm going to do it to object because I know I have. Uh, we did the, ex the the STL file is resting on this plane here, so we can extrude it down to the region point like this. Turn on the body again, and Fusion will cut like that. Now we done our cutout. I'm going to hide the sketch. I'm going to turn on our STL file. So, of course, the problem is we can do uh, inspect section analysis and do that on uh, from here. And we can see, gonna hide this again, that there will be some places, if you zoom in, you can see that the solid body goes through the mesh in some places just because this is organic mesh and it doesn't uh, comply totally. And here is the other way around. The mesh moves away from the solid because it's just done like a straight extrude down and of course you could do combine but that would in some places cause the problem that when you insert the mesh you cannot move remove it again so for creating some clearance especially if you're going to free to print this going to turn up i will use the scale option s on the keyboard scale solid scale the blue one entities we're going to select our little solid body here and the point we're going to hide the mesh for now I want to do the scale, of course, from uh, this point. Let's select point, remove you, so it is correctly this. So it's scaling from the center of the mesh you're basically found. Non uniform because I do not want to change the set scale or the height of it. So I would just do 1.01, 1.01. 1 .01. So I scale it up in x and y direction by 1%. You can choose any percentage you want. Hit OK, gonna turn on our mesh again, hide this, and once again do an inspection, section analysis like this. And we can see now we have clear, uh, creating some clearance. Uh, this is up to you how much you wanna play. You can see there's now a small gap in between here. And this, of course, depends on the precision of your uh, 3D printer. Gonna turn it into a nicer mesh to look at. Uh, how much you need to scale and change things or if you want to do some manipulation with a knife or file to fix the 3D printer part so it fits nicely into this. And of course, you now need to add the geometry for uh, LED lights or other stuff you want to put in this. And of course, you can make a square base or anything you want. I hope this is useful for some people. So this is how you can take a mesh file, not convert it into a solid and spend all the time waiting for Fusion to do that and still use it as a reference for a uh, solid modeling. So we can do that. This is our final solid modeling part. We're gonna free print. So I hope it's useful for you. And I hope to see you around again. Take care, see you around and goodbye.